The day started early for the old men and women of Lijiang. It was an official Chinese holiday when Nashi men and women in their later years trudged to the top of the highest peak that surrounds the Black Dragon Lake in Yunnan province. The climb is steep, and at the top they light incense, shout, and sing to hear the echoes. The friendly Nashi twice pulled Chris up to continue, and finally an 80-plus-year-old woman held her hand firmly and pulled her to the pagoda halfway up. This opened up a friendly sign language discussion with two other Nashi grandmothers about marriage. It is good. And children. Two Nashi families now have pictures of our children in their houses. These women have six children, far above the norm for China's one-child policy. Lijiang is nestled on a plateau at about 9,000 feet, and the air is clean and brisk. The Chinese government is encouraging tourism in these minority areas, and construction is brisk. Most of this town of 200,000 was destroyed by a severe earthquake in February 1996. Rebuilding was undertaken without the help of outsiders, and most of what you see now is new. The main inhabitants of Lijiang are Nashi, one of the unreached minority peoples who live in the Yunnan province. Like the Moso, the Nashi are by heritage a matrilineal people. Traditionally, property was inherited by the daughters of the family, and marriage was more like a series of extended affairs and not monogamous at all. Under the influence of modernization, the Nashi have now adopted more of a formal marriage structure. However, you can imagine that the woman is still a major force in the household. Situated only a thousand feet higher in a valley is beautiful Lake Lugu. Yep. The dirt and cobblestone road tops out much higher, and a brief walk from the road leads to a breathtaking lookout over the lake. Like the Nashi, the Moso are matrilineal, a family structure that is still practiced today among the 30,000 or so Moso. Children belong to the women, and paternity is not important. In fact, there is not even a Moso word for father in their language. What this means is that if you are a woman, you inherit the land and house which is passed down to your daughters. Both the Moso and the Nashi are Tibetan Buddhist, a religion of ritual, and at the grassroots the folk form is mixed with fear, fear of spirits who might hurt them, hurt their families, or harvest. There, is, there are only one or two known believers among the Moso, and they are men. Not a very good start considering their place in society. It is a little better among the Nashi, with several families meeting in cell groups. The Moso and the Nashi need the gospel. There is no effective witness among the Moso at all. Any effort to reach the Nashi or Moso will have to involve a long-term commitment. There are opportunities to get a residence permit to study Mandarin in Lijiang and to develop relationships among the Nashi in town and neighboring villages. It takes two to three years of full-time study to master Mandarin, which most Nashi or Moso understand. We found both groups to be friendly to women. Evidence of this include the ladies helping Chris up the mountain including her in a small group and other interactions. In Lake Lugu, several of the China Harvest women team members were invited into homes, something that never happened to male evangelists. It is clear that any effort to reach either the Nashi or Moso must involve a family with children. Veteran Christian worker Ken Starkey had this to say on the adoption process. For, uh, for a group, a fellowship, uh, an organization, to, uh, to seek strategically to reach the Moswa. Uh, the initial steps, the short-term steps, would be to, to do research into who already uh, is seeking to reach the Moswa. There are various independent uh, well, folks that uh, have been coming here, and, and they, they have knowledge as well as some contacts with Moswa. Um, there are a couple Moswa believers, although the faith is not strong, a good starting place. A long-term um, it would be necessary to have uh, to send someone here to study Chinese um, with, uh, with the, the plan and purpose of uh, putting together uh, an, a program 
um, building relationships with um, uh, more Christian minorities, building relationships with the underground church, um, networking these uh, for the purpose of reaching out here. The Chinese language would be very important. Um, although there are people here who speak Chinese uh, to, uh, as well, you can encourage some of the, um, the existing foreigners who already speak Chinese, already live, say, in Kunming, to pursue this goal as well. Uh, but it would almost require ha to having someone over here uh, to administrate and uh, to, uh, to network this. Uh, now, uh, that w that's a good first step. Um, as well, um, you need to pray. You need to pray for this area. You know, the Moswa not only are under the bondage of Tibetan Buddhism, which is a stronghold in the world. Uh, however, uh, they also have their own uh, religion from before Tibetan Buddhism was introduced, um, worshiping literally a mountain, a rock. Um, beside their lake. Uh, these, uh, these are things that as people know about and can pray strategically uh, and, and these people are only going to be set, through, uh, set free through the power of prayer. Um, and information has a big part in, in that, uh, in, in speaking that vision. Now, um, the next step is really looking to uh, raise up leadership, raise up someone who can come, raise up someone who, who uh, can handle life in China. Maybe it's a family, maybe an individual, maybe a couple singles. Uh, just depends on who, um, as that vision is spoken in your fellowship, who really feels a draw to that. Uh, and it'll happen. It will happen because God wants these people reached. Um, then when it's time for them to come, they will already know people here. They will already know people trying to reach these, and it will be a team effort for them and, and a lot easier. They won't be trying to do something on their own.